Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're finally gonna leave the house and make an awesome swing. Today we're back out at the farm and since it's so beautiful, it's springtime, we wanna figure out a way to spend more time out here, specifically around the fire pit, but we don't have anywhere to sit. So the idea today is to make something to sit on and I think I want that to be a swing. We've got a bunch of trees here and these two are about 12 feet apart. So putting a swing right here, like a big porch swing, would be really cool. Yeah. My bad. Are you guys filming already? Yeah, yeah. This is cool and I wanted to try it out. So if you could hurry up, that'd be great. Okay, well anyway, we're gonna make a swing and we're gonna hang it in between these two trees. But part of being out here is taking care of the space. That means mowing, both to keep it looking nice but also to keep the tick population down. Luckily, this video is sponsored by Cub Cadet and this is their LT42E electric riding lawnmower. Yes, this thing is electric and it's awesome. Because it's electric, that means there's no gas, there's no oil, there's no belts, it's super quiet, there's no emissions. This thing is really, really fantastic. This machine has very low maintenance, which means you're gonna save a whole lot of time that you can use with your family or just being outdoors. And if you wanna figure out exactly how much time you're gonna save, Cub Cadet has a time savings calculator that you can check out. I've been using it at my house for a couple of weeks now and my entire family has been really happy with how it's performed. And it works just as great as any other riding lawnmower I've ever used. In fact, it'll run for an hour and a half on a single charge and that gets you about two acres of cut. On top of that, the build quality of this thing is fantastic. If you wanna find out more about this product and all the other stuff that Cub Cadet makes, hit the link down in the description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Anyway, we're gonna make a big porch swing that hangs right here in between these two trees. So let's head back to the shop, put that together, and then we'll come hang it up. Basically, we're gonna make a porch swing, but instead of a traditional wooden swing, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, a little bit more robust. And I wanna make sure that it's deep enough for me to be able to lay down on comfortably. And that also means that it needs to be a little bit longer, a little bit wider of a swing than you would normally find. So we're gonna make this out of steel and cedar. The steel is honestly not much more expensive than lumber is right now, so that's kind of part of it, but it's a really simple steel frame, box frame with some cedar planks on top of it. We'll make sure that those cedar pieces are nice and sealed so that they will survive outside for a long time. We'll curve the edges, make them really comfortable. It's gonna be really cool, but first we need to go cut down the steel into some pieces and make a frame. This wing's gonna be made out of two really simple frames, one on the bottom, one on the back, and they'll be welded together. The bottom one is gonna be a mitered frame, and so I've got each one of these pieces cut with miters on the end, and I've added a bevel so that you can have a little area to weld them together better. It makes for a better, stronger weld. So I've got these laid out, and we're just gonna tack them up and then add full welds, then we'll add some cross pieces in the middle. Anthony, you know what we haven't done in a long time? Montage time. We got the two frames done and I wanted to point out that this is actually a pretty good project for practicing your welding because these are one and a half inch square tubes, which mean all of the joints are just kind of butt joints for one and a half inches. It's a great little area to try welding a nice bead, then you can move on to the next one. And most of these are gonna be covered by wood, so you don't even have to worry about grinding them down. Doesn't matter what they look like. Now that I've got these two frames done, I need to put on the armrests and these are gonna be two more pieces just stuck up like this. And then there's gonna be a piece of flat bar going across and that's gonna hold the wood armrest eventually. So let me get these on, then we'll talk about mounting the back piece at an angle in between them. Now 
now that I've got those pieces on, I can drill some holes in this flat bar and drive screws up from the bottom into some pieces of wood so you won't have the screws right underneath where your arm goes. So now that those are in place, we can put the back in, and this was made to fit right in between them. And basically, most chairs are at a five degree angle. So I've read. So I'm gonna lean this back and get it clamped in place and then weld it on. To figure out that angle, I'm actually gonna use this. This is a magnetic angle finder or digital angle gauge. And this is one that I use on my table saw. So basically I'm gonna put it here and set it to zero. Once it's at zero, then I can lean it back until it reads five degrees and then I can clamp it and weld it in place. To be honest, five degrees looks like not enough to me. I want this to be a little loungy, so I'm gonna push it back further than that. Now we've got this thing kind of, uh, what's the word? Clamped. Now we've got this thing clamped in place, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up all these welds, get it welded to the bottom section of the frame, then we'll look at where we need to drill holes so we can attach the wood. I got all the holes drilled for the boards to be attached, but I have a few more holes I need to put in, and that's for these bolts. Now, these things are rated at 1,200 pounds a piece, so it should be plenty strong. We're gonna do four of these. We're gonna do one on the back kind of side of the, the upright part, and then one down here on the bottom. These are gonna get bolted through, and then a chain will attach here to hang it from the tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the holes drilled for these, and then we'll paint this thing up before we put them in. For the boards for this, I got some cedar decking boards. So they're a little bit thicker. They already got a round over on them. They're really expensive here, uh, but I think it'll last outside for a long time. And I'm gonna put some finish on them because they'll look nicer, they'll last longer outside. I've got these cut down to length and I'm gonna screw them on with some stainless steel decking screws. One thing that's kind of cool is these have a smaller head than a typical decking screw, and this is just barely bigger than the holes that I drilled in this, so they sit almost flush. They just barely stick out, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna get these screwed in, and then we'll have to make some pieces for the armrests. This thing is looking really good. I love the way that these boards look. I wanna use the same boards for the armrests, make them nice and wide. And I went ahead and kind of prototyped one out and just cut out the shape, but I still need to trim this area back here to account for the thickness of that piece of wood. So I'm gonna to try to cut that to make sure it fits and then we'll just copy this onto another piece and cut it out. All right, this is actually a really simple project, but I think it's gonna look pretty nice with the combination of the paint and the finish. Now for the finish, I'm gonna use an outdoor finish. This is a spar urethane I've used a few times. It holds up really well on pieces of wood that are gonna be out in the elements. Eventually, no matter what kind of finish you use, you'll have to recoat it, but luckily, cedar is pretty rot resistant anyway. So if this doesn't last for 10 years, the cedar should still do fine outside over time. So I'm gonna put a coat of this on, then we'll take it up to the farm and hang it up.
So it's gonna go here in between these trees and eventually what I wanna do is put some sort of a bar across the top. Um, but we're not gonna do that yet because I think that's also gonna connect to something else in the future. So for today, we're actually just gonna put some hooks in the tree and then hang some chains from those. <laughs> this thing is cool. Uh, are those gonna be big enough? Yes, this is gonna be strong enough. Each one of these holds about 1,200 pounds. Yeah, this thing is cool, I'm going. So you gotta make sure that all the hardware you're using is strong enough to hold the weight of the swing, which is a little bit heavy, and the people that are gonna be on it. This one holds about three people. So really, really sturdy hardware is essential. They're either gonna rust? No, they're not gonna rust. <laughs> all this stuff that I got uh, is for outdoor use, except for a few items that I just couldn't find locally. And so replacements uh, made out of stainless steel are on the way. But eventually, you wanna make sure that everything you're using is not gonna rust when it's outside. I kinda ran into a weird thing where I couldn't get a closure that was big enough to fit through this chain, but also big enough to go around the outside of this. So I've actually had to double them up a little bit, but it'll end up working out just fine. So here it is, the finished swing. I'm extremely happy with how this thing turned out and it's just super awesome to be sitting here on our property enjoying nature. If this gave you an idea for something that you can make in your Hey, backyard, don't forget to tell people about the Maker Alliance, Bob. The Maker Alliance is the group of people that support what we do here at I Like To Make Stuff and they're awesome people, there's tons of perks. If you wanna check that out, hit the link down in the description. We've got tons of other types of videos if you wanna check those out and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a porch swing. Oh, I missed my mark, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> you can make in your backyard or something. Hey, don't pretend, uh, dang it, I forgot what I was saying. Don't forget, Bob, in case you didn't remember this.